TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Jerusalem's counterterrorism bureau warns Israelis of Iran's continued efforts to promote attacks against Israeli targets in the immediate future. China's state councillor and foreign minister Wang Yi concludes his six-nation tour of the Middle East. Egypt's Suez Canal has once again reopened for commercial shipping. Jerusalem's counterterrorism bureau warns Israelis of Iran's continued efforts to promote attacks against Israeli targets in the immediate future. In light of a sharp decrease in coronavirus morbidity and a high number of inoculated Israelis, a significant increase in outbound tourism is expected, especially during the summer vacation time period. Consequently, the Counterterrorism Bureau issued a travel advisory highlighting its main risk assessment for Israelis traveling overseas. The main countries with a high likelihood of hostile activity against Israelis include Georgia, Azerbaijan, Abu Dhabi and Dubai, Bahrain, the northern Iraqi Kurdistan region, Turkey, Jordan and Egypt. The Bureau further cited that an Indian-led investigation into an explosion of an improvised explosive device adjacent to the Israeli embassy in New Delhi on January 29th earlier this year found that the RGC's Quds Force was responsible for executing the attack which thankfully failed to claim any victims. Nevertheless, in light of Iran's repeated failures, it remains determined to follow through on its pledge to harm Israel for its alleged involvement in the successful assassination of Tehran's chief nuclear scientist, Mohsen Fakhizadeh. In other news, China's state councillor and foreign minister Wang Yi concluded a visit to the Kingdom of Bahrain yesterday which was his last stop of a Middle East tour that included the United Arab Emirates, Oman, Saudi Arabia, Turkey, and the Islamic Republic of Iran. It is important to explain that a common denominator among the majority of Mideastern capitals, which Beijing's top diplomat visited, includes separate spats with the United States, since its new Biden administration vocally pursues a foreign policy which demands accountability of its partners in all that relates to human rights abuses. Consequently, the Chinese foreign minister relates separate messages of Beijing's solidarity with the historically unique characteristics of each country in the region. Per a Chinese foreign ministry readout, Wang accused some Western countries of using human rights issues as an excuse to interfere in others' internal affairs and destabilize other nations. Therefore, during his separate meetings with regional leaders, Minister Wang called upon all nations to uphold the principle of non-interference in other countries' internal affairs, to observe the purposes of the UN Charter, and to respect the basic norms of international relations. Turning to Washington, where the Biden administration said it has yet to review the recently signed cooperation agreement between Iran and China and whether it adheres to the long list of sanctions imposed by the United States against the Islamic Republic. Asked further in a White House press briefing whether the United States would consider lifting part of its sanctions for the purpose of getting Iran to partially recomply with the 2015 nuclear deal as a first stage, Press Secretary Jen Psaki said the following. That's not under consideration. Uh, we remain uh, hopeful and focused on uh, returning to a diplomatic approach uh, in partnership with members of the P5 plus one. Uh, China is, of course, a member of that. Uh, and we, uh, of course, will take a look at uh, and ensure that any uh, sanctions uh, that need to be implemented would be uh, as it relates to this package, but we haven't looked at the specific agreement yet at this point in time. So our, our approach uh, remains the same and nothing has changed about our approach. The White House denial comes in response to a report by the U.S.-based news website Politico, which alleged that in a new proposal, the Biden administration had asked of Iran to hold some of its nuclear activities such as work on advanced centrifuges and the enrichment of uranium to 20% purity, 
in exchange for some relief from U.S. economic sanctions. The Ayatollah regime apparently responded to the report by an article of its own, in which it asserted that Iran would only stop 20% enrichment if the U.S. bans are lifted first. Separately, Press Secretary Saki was asked whether the United States had any concrete assessment on the global economic impact which the blockage of Egypt's Suez Canal is going to have. Uh, well, my understanding is it's been freed, but it's not yet open, right, the canal, and that will still happen, and there are, of course, ships waiting to pass through the canal. Uh, we, of course, are monitoring and will be assessing uh, the impact, but I don't have anything to update you on that from here. Egyptian authorities announced an end to the crisis after extensive efforts to reflow the stranded freighter yielded positive results. The CEO of the Dutch firm, which helped reflow the 400-meter-long container ship, explained how it was done. It's all about physics, and uh, most uh, physical laws are not uh, that difficult, you could say. But uh, the trick is to make them work for you and not against you, and that's what we did. So what we more or less did is we used the water power that was in the canal with the returning tides to push the vessel where we were pulling it. And the combination of the two, as we hoped, at the end of the day, did the trick. Meanwhile, in light of the hundreds of millions of euros in expected losses, trading companies are naturally demanding compensation. Nevertheless, when asked who was to blame, Egypt's Suez Canal Authority asserted that while Egypt is not to blame, an investigation into the root cause of the incident would ultimately determine those liable. <laughs> احنا ما لناش ذنب في اللي حصل دوت احنا مضرورين اكتر من جميع الناس فالتعويضات حبان في التحيات هتبقى مسؤوليه مين Turning to Egypt's western neighbor Libya where a recently established unity government is seemingly drawing much attention from regional and global powers after years of deadly conflict between opposing tribes from the western and eastern parts of the war torn country a UN-brokered peace initiative ultimately emerged successful, with the respective warring administrations peacefully merging into one unity government on March the 16th. Nevertheless, despite a peaceful transition of power, foreign mercenaries and forces remain in place and on both sides of the country. Therefore, in a special foreign ministerial summit held in the Libyan capital Tripoli, the foreign ministers of France, Italy and Germany jointly declared Europe's intention to back Libya's sovereignty and national integrity. Je suis surtout heureux d'être ici accompagné de Deiko Mas et de Luigi Di Maio, mes collègues allemands et italiens. Nous démontrons par notre présence que l'Union européenne est unie sur le dossier libyen. Cette unité est nécessaire car la Libye constitue notre voisinage immédiat et que nous ne pouvons détourner les regards des, des conséquences que peut avoir la crise libyenne en Europe en matière de sécurité, en matière de terrorisme, en matière de migration. Et de la même manière, la stabilité de la Libye est une des clés de la sécurité du Sahel, de l'Afrique du Nord et de la Méditerranée. Nous voulons montrer que nous sommes européens et entschlossen an der Seite Libyens. Als wir im letzten Jahr den Berliner Prozess initiiert haben, haben uns viele gesagt, es gibt keine Aussicht auf eine friedliche Lösung in Libyen, keine Chance für einen politischen Prozess. Jetzt ruhen seit fast einem halben Jahr die Waffen, es gibt eine Regierung der nationalen Einheit und Es gibt einen klaren Fahrplan für freie Wählen, Wahlen im Dezember dieses Jahres. La nostra presenza a Tripoli testimonia l'unità di intenti dei paesi europei 
più impegnati per la stabilizzazione della Libia, vogliamo oggi dire che l'Europa continuerà a rimanere a fianco del popolo libico e a sostenerlo nel suo cammino verso la pace. Ma siamo qui anche per esprimere pieno appoggio alle autorità libiche al processo di transizione e riunificazione istituzionale in atto. Siamo pronti a collaborare con l'autorità esecutiva unificata ad interim e a sostenerla nelle prossime fasi di questo percorso. After the top diplomats of the respective European powers concluded their summit in Tripoli, the newly elected president of the Libyan Presidential Council, Mohamed El Menfi, traveled to the Turkish city of Istanbul, where he met with Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan. According to a Turkish statement during the meeting, the two leaders discussed bilateral relations as well as regional and international issues. Thank you for watching us. As part of TV7 Israel's prayer initiative, I would like to encourage you today to join myself and the team here in Jerusalem to lift up Libya in prayer for its salvation and peace, alongside prayers for our persecuted brothers and sisters around the world, in addition to our ongoing prayers, of course, for the peace of Jerusalem, the salvation of Israel, and for all those who are impacted by the numerous ramifications of the coronavirus worldwide. Separately, I would like to thank all of you who partner with TV7 Israel. Your monthly support, both by means of prayer and finance, is of vital importance for our ongoing operations. I'm Jonathan Essen, wishing you an Erev Tov, a Pesach Sameach, and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time.